They're sick people. But despite all of this, they go after me for the Presidential Records Act. Well, that's what they should be looking at, because everything I did was under the Presidential Records Act. We have a thug prosecutor named Smith, Jack Smith. He's a thug. He's had many losses. He's destroyed many lives, and they put him in charge. In the meantime, what about Biden's records? This guy has 1,850 boxes. He has boxes stored in Chinatown in D.C. Rough place, by the way. He has them stored at Penn, where China has paid them almost $100 million. China paid over 100, almost $100 million. And nobody wants to even talk about that. He took classified information when he was a senator. And even Democrat senators say, you can't do that. Charging a former president of the United States under the Espionage Act of 1917. Espionage, me, espionage. As Putin said, you are the most vicious president ever. There's never been a president that did this to me, and yet I got along with him, isn't that nice? Don't forget, I ended his pipeline first day. I ended it. I said, no more pipeline in the middle of construction. Biden came in and he approved it. I gave javelins, remember this? I gave javelins to Ukraine. They were the anti-tank missiles and they knocked the hell out of Russia. But I got along with Putin and it's good to get along with people on the other side. It's very good. The Espionage Act of 1917 is an act for a crime so heinous that only the death penalty would do is one of the most outrageous and vicious legal theories ever put in an American court of law. There's never been anything like this. And by the way, almost all other presidents took the documents with them. You look at Barack Hussein Obama. Did anyone ever hear of Barack Hussein Obama? <laughs> the Bushes took documents. Jimmy Carter took documents. You don't like Bush. Yeah, I don't understand that. I mean, he got us into the Middle East, didn't he, huh? Got us into the Middle East. Ten trillion dollars, that's right. No more war unless we need it. We, we have the greatest military now in the world. I rebuilt it. Of course, we shouldn't have given $85 billion worth to Afghanistan, losing 13 great soldiers, leaving Americans behind. That's what showed the weakness, and that's one of the reasons, I think maybe a primary reason, that Putin went in and that President Xi of China is talking pretty big. The Espionage Act has been used to go after traitors and spies. It has nothing to do with a former president legally keeping documents. As a president, the law that applies to this case is not the Espionage Act, this vicious, never used before, never, it's only been used on me over boxes that I'm allowed to have the Espionage Act. But the Presidential Records Act, which is not even mentioned in this horrible and vicious and stupid, according to very talented lawyers, 44-page indictment, under the Presidential Records Act, which is a civil situation, not a criminal law, I had every right to have these documents, personal belongings and boxes. I had absolute right to have them. Joe Biden didn't, and Mike Pence didn't, and neither did certain other people that weren't presidents, because they were not covered by the Presidential Records Act of 1978, relatively new compared to others. But these scoundrels and thugs in our weaponized government are corrupt, just like the president is corrupt. So they decided only to come after me, only to come after me. It's an amazing thing. It's called election interference, and it's backfired on them. Because my poll numbers are much higher now than they were three months ago. And we were still leading by a lot three months ago, but now we're really leading. A lot of people are going to start dropping out. Watch, you know, they're at a solid one. One of them had a zero with an arrow to the left. What does that mean? Can you have a zero with an arrow pointing left? That means they got less than zero. I guess it's probably a double voter. You know, these people that vote two, three, four times, I guess that's what they're referring to. They have zero with an arrow pointing left. The crucial legal precedent is laid out in the most important case ever on this subject, known as the Clinton Sox case. You know why? Because he took things out in his socks. Bill Clinton, 
After leaving the White House, Bill Clinton kept 79 audio tapes in his socks and his sock drawer. Well, unusual place, right? Of these tapes, some of the most important conversations in government were had. Talked to the leaders of many, many big and great and strong and countries, enemies of ours, a lot of them. Not only was Bill Clinton never even considered for criminal prosecution based on the tapes and all of the other things he took, but the tapes in particular, they were brutal. But when he was sued for them in a civil case, he won the case. Judge, in other words, they said he could do it. Judge Amy Berman Jackson's decision states, I quote, under the statutory scheme established by the Presidential Records Act, the decision to segregate personal materials from presidential records is made by the president during the president's term and in his sole and complete discretion. You're getting this. In other words, it's a phony deal. Any normal administration, even an opposing one, would consider that to be the end of the case, but not the corrupt Biden regime, because they want to do this for election interference. He's getting his ass kicked in the polls, and he needs to do this for election interference, which is their new form of cheating. It's actually a pretty old form, but it's new to this country to the extent that they're doing it. The Sox decision also states, quote, the National Archives and Records Administration, or NARA, radical left group. Do you know they have, NARA has the Constitution flagged, red flagged, you know that? And they have not only the Constitution red flagged, they have the Bill of Rights because they say they're dangerous documents. This is what we're dealing with. But they don't have the authority to designate. Think of that. NARA does not have the authority to designate materials as presidential records. They're the ones coming after me. NARA does not have the tapes in question, and NARA lacks any right, duty, or means to seize control of them. This is the decision of the judge. The president enjoys unconstrained authority. This is, again, the decision of a respected judge to make decisions regarding the disposition of documents. Neither the archivist nor Congress has the authority to veto the president's decision. In other words, the president alone, not the vice president, not allowed, not other offices, and not the senators. When he was a senator, he took a lot of classified information, and you're not allowed to do that. The Presidential Records Act does not confer any at all mandatory or even discretionary authority on the archivist to classify records. Under the statute, just to finish up, this responsibility is left solely to the President of the United States, not all these other people that say, oh, he kept some documents. What I do, I do legally. In other words, whatever documents a President decides to take with him, he has the absolute right to do so. That's the law. And it couldn't be more clear. I don't think it could be more clear than that. Even the New York Times, of all papers, in a major article said that when it comes to asking for documents, I guarantee you this reporter got fired, from the former presidents, the only power that NARA has is to say, pretty please, this is the Times, pretty please, could we have them? Quote, asking nicely is about all they can do. And yet, they reported me to the Department of Justice for criminal prosecution. So there it is. Nothing like this has ever happened. The Espionage Act has never been used before. These are sick people. These are degenerates that are running our country, and our country is going to hell. And I just might add briefly, you know, right next door, because these are all Democrats, and they're all in total contact they're in total contact with the Justice Department. That includes Manhattan. That includes Atlanta, Georgia, one of the most unsafe per capita places anywhere in this country. It's number one or number two. Worse than Chicago. You don't know that. People are leaving Atlanta. And we loved Atlanta. We loved Georgia. Georgia was — we did great in Georgia. Unfortunately, bad things happen. We can't let any of that stuff happen again, and we're not going to let it. But right next door in Georgia, the racist 
District attorney goes after me for a perfect phone call, even more perfect than the call I made to Ukraine, even more perfect. She's got the worst per capita crime record in the country. Murders, think of this, murderers are allowed to get away with murder. They're allowed to get away with murder. They don't even go after him. The only one they go after is Trump. Let's see, didn't he have a phone call? And when you think about that call, many lawyers were in that call. That was a call made when I was president, and I was protesting the election results in Georgia. And they had numerous, many. They had Secretary of State on, Raffensperger. And they had many lawyers on the call, some ours, but many of them theirs. Not one person protested that call. There was no problem with that call. They didn't say, sir, I'm sorry, please rephrase. It was only a long time afterwards. They said, let's see, Trump made a phone call, didn't he? Well, we actually made another one that was so perfect that they refused to even show it or report it, but we have a copy of it. It was a perfect call. These were perfect calls. These were calls where you're questioning the validity and the safety of elections. And it's a disgrace that they're allowed to even think about it. But not one person protested until long after that call. And if there was something wrong with that call, I am not a stupid person. Number one, I'm an honest person, so I wouldn't do it anyway. But when people are on the phone, including many lawyers, do you think many people were on that phone? Many, many people. Do you think I'm going to say what they'd like to have? But it, the problem is it's not borne out. I will tell you what is borne out. The call was supposedly taped in the state of Florida. And in Florida, you're not allowed to do, you know, that's a two-party state. In other words, you're not allowed to tape phone calls. They taped the phone call. To show you how nice they are, they taped the phone call, and you're not allowed. So that is the real crime here. They had a two-party state with somebody taping the call, supposedly from Florida. The Bidens took in millions and millions of dollars from Ukraine, from Russia and from China. And now Joe has given China the green light as they open up, uh, not even believable, military installations in Cuba just 90 miles off our coast. Think of that. And that will end as soon as I'm president. China will be leaving. They will be leaving. They will be leaving. And we had a very good relationship. You didn't hear about Taiwan, and you didn't hear about Ukraine from Putin during my four years. They say, how do you know? Because that would have never happened. They say, how do you know? They say, because number one, it never happened was never even discussed. They knew better. Joe Biden's policy is China first. My policy is very simple, America first.